Hey everyone, this is Jason Box, and I want to talk about how 2019 is shaping up to be possibly an extremely large melt year for the Greenland ice sheet. Let's start with weather simulations from the Danish Meteorological Institute posted at polarportal.dk. What you see here is an average accumulation of snow of about 2 gigatons per day throughout the winter, and the blue line is rising up as the Greenland ice sheet accumulates mass from snow. Now the gray line represents the average accumulation over a 30-year period. The red line is the record melt year 2012, and here we are beginning to crest over uh, to where the accumulation of mass starts to become a loss of mass at the surface. And this is happening about three weeks earlier than average and earlier than the record melt year 2012. A persistent weather pattern has been loading the southeastern ice sheet with snowfall, that's the blue areas, extra snow, starving the western slope of the ice sheet from snow, so the red areas are extra thin snow cover this year. Part of my work with Polar Portal is to update these satellite measurements of the reflectivity change of the ice sheet. These are picking up the bright anomaly in the southeast, the blue areas, and the red and yellow areas in the west are a dark anomaly that's associated with the early exposure of bare ice. Also part of Polar Portal are these 24 automatic weather stations situated at the surface of the ice sheet. We've been operating these for now 11 years, and these provide ground truth to see what's really going on at the surface. So here are air temperatures from one of the Promise sites near Greenland's capital, Nuuk, where melt conditions have started about two weeks earlier than the previous 10-year average, with air temperatures about 10 Celsius above average. Higher up on the ice sheet at the Nuuk U site, we have melt conditions starting three weeks earlier than the recent average, and air temperatures 8 Celsius above that average. Further north at Upernavik, we have melt onset four weeks ahead of average and air temperatures 10 to 15 Celsius above the recent average. Now let's have a look at the southern tip of Greenland where we usually record the most melting. At this place, the bare ice has occurred some weeks ahead of schedule. You can see the drop in albedo, the red line, uh, dropping down so dark surface and it will be absorbing more sunlight for that much longer. The point is that the albedo feedback mechanism can kick in and when that starts early you can have big results by the middle and the end of the melt season. Back up to the area around Nuke, it's the same pattern with the albedo dropping below average. The average is the black line. You can see the darkening well ahead of the average. Now surface ice ablation. Here we are at Nuke L and the red curve, that's this year 2019, we have already 1.2 meters of ice loss from the surface. As compared to the average, the black line, you can see the ice ablation at this location started in the last 10 years about four weeks later and now it's uh, started early it's got this head start and it's the albedo feedback that can guarantee that 2019 becomes a really big melt year. The only thing that can shut it down is a lot of snow happening in the middle of summer. That is possible, but the way this is shaping up appears to me very likely that we will have a very high melt year and even the potential to exceed the record melt year of 2012 2012 was certainly exceptional in that the very warm temperatures came on from record warm North America, drifted over the Greenland ice sheet. But what's different this year is that the melt is quite strong quite early, about three weeks before 2012, and the snow cover is lower than average along West Greenland. Those two factors, the early melt onset and low snow cover, mean that 2019 is probably going to be a very big melt year for Greenland.